la docencia y la extensión hemos venido trabajando ya por varios años, pero que ahora tenemos potencial y liderar más allá de las fronteras nacionales de la mano de instituciones de primer nivel como lo son nuestros socios en la iniciativa que nos convoca hoy. Tenemos estos dos próximos días una oportunidad única para evaluar nuestros esfuerzos en ubicar el bienestar en el centro de nuestras estadísticas y políticas, pedir los aspectos relevantes para las personas, usar los instrumentos para diseñar políticas públicas que promuevan el desarrollo y promuevan el desarrollo de la comunidad y que debe ser una prioridad no solo para el gobierno, but also for Particular the academia, multilateral uh, entities and private companies that owe their operation to people and societies in which they operate. In this line, due to the relativity, due to the actions of public policy, the indicators and traditional metrics that are usually used have to be selected very carefully, updated to the context where it is implemented to ensure a better quality of reflection. Latin America has been leader in measuring poverty, in reducing poverty, and most countries have understood a development of a multidimensional strategy, but it's important still sills that limit the understanding of the subjective welfare of inequalities and gaps between groups that traditionally have not been analyzed and the comparison among countries uh, through local geographic spaces. Additionally, the digital transformation offers new opportunities to collect information massively and in real time, the proper use of information and proper usage of the data to transform positively our reality, perhaps as academic researchers and policy makers. Precisely this year, the uh, Nobel in Economics understood the struggle against poverty and the efforts to have a true impact in people's welfare. So most assuredly, what is going to be discussed in these three days will contribute to an improvement of the public policy in Latin America. Thank you and welcome all of you to this event. And now the floor will be to the Director of National Planning. Good day. The, I'm the Board of the Economics in the University of El Rosario. It's an honor to be in this university that has invited me to so many events and that reminds me of the times that I gave class in this faculty and I'm glad once more to be here. Juan David Oviedo, director of the DANE, Martín Duran, uh, Sebastián Diana of the Orde. A very special greeting to Minister Cepeda to the always friend of CIPAL, Dr. Acosta, and to each of the operators of the government that are with us and the colleagues of the National Planning Department. I would like to first, on behalf of the national government and the president, Ivan Duque, to highlight the importance not only of this event, but of the entire week. This week has turned into a celebration for Colombians, a celebration because after a very long process of various years, Colombia is not only admitted into a group of good practices, such as the Organization for Cooperation of Economic Development. But in addition to this, the Constitutional Court yesterday stated in reference to the constitutionality of the legislation that is required to be part of this organism. And I would like to begin by repeating not only the gratefulness that the government and Colombians have with each of the individuals. There are hundreds of people that were working on these various topics of various entities. And although it is a uh, matter that seems to be of the government, but it's actually several private sectors and the academia that gave opinions, uh, columnists that went through this topic. And we're very happy about this uh, week that is beginning on this topic that begins precisely with this topic. The second element with which I would like to make reference 
And the Dean mentioned it too, is the evident, undeniable, and absolutely clear progress that Latin America has had, not only in collecting information, and also the measures where you have follow-ups to economic development and human development. One of the most successful is the uh, multidimensional poverty index in which some Colombians have been pioneers in the first estimates in the case of Roberto Angulo and some additional academics or academicians who have done work when it was not uh, open to uh, discussion in these emerging countries. We've not only done it with measurements, we've also had in Colombia uh, less than two decades ago, we had half of the population in poverty, monetary poverty. In less than two decades, we've had 27% of monetary poverty. And if you review the ex life expectancy in Colombia, the increase is also dramatic. Uh, we have practically tripled life expectancy in less than 100 years. We have also decreased in 300% the um, maternity and uh, newborn mortality rate. This is clearly very important. This has been highlighted by many academicians and economists that have studied and analyzed in detail the progress on economic development. And in Latin America, it is also not new for this to happen. Why do I highlight it? Due to two reasons. The first, because it seems that there is in some way a denial of these facts. It seems that there is uh, political correct to deny this progress. It is politically correct to criticize any type of progress that might exist in societies, regardless of the type of societies it is. This seems to be politically correct, specifically for people of my generation. And those that are younger feel uh, very happy denying what is absolutely true and verifiable in the data. That is why I make reference to this deeds that most people know of. But the second reason why I make reference to this progress precisely in this event where you speak about measures and metrics for welfare and economic development and human development is because in the region and within the context of Latin America, we see that despite of a very strong progress, what happens in Colombia happens in the rest of Latin America with a clear and evident exception and with very clear your explications, explanations, which is Venezuela that is one in the opposite uh, indicators of mortality rate, of economic growth, of development, entirely different from the rest of Latin America, and he has evident explanations. What is true, however, is that society is not happy, and you see it. Yesterday, we noticed what happened in Chile in respect to a measure that technically did not have any discussion. And in terms of communication and political decision, it ended up in very complex decisions, not only in Chile, where it has characteristics of the government, but also Bolivia, due to entirely different, and also from an entirely different government from Chile. There is also uh, upheaval due to specific elections. Weeks prior, on a measure that undoubtedly is aligned with fulfillment of international commitments. For example, COP21, a sustainable development, and most of the practices that you have in countries of the OP and an efficient administration of resources, focus of expenses, and to avoid uh, subsidies and fossil, fossil fuels. Ecuador, they took measures that are understanding in a scenario of academicians where you normally don't argue in communication or in politics, but most effectively, there was also a rejection to this measure that does not have, uh, from the technical point of view, uh, discussion. It is um, pro the poor. It is absolutely pro environmental sustainability. And even though it had a very strong rejection, and due to these two reasons, I make reference to progress. Because although I particularly can confess personally more than the director of national planning, 
It gives us a sense of frustration that the world makes progress, the region makes progress, and it seems that we are in circles of denying this progress that can be verified with data. Self-criticism is also important. I believe that we're doing this in Colombia and in the rest of the region, and I'm going to make reference to an exercise made by the National Planning Department a few years ago that lists in some way the subjective satisfaction and the specific objective measures of social progress, specifically the income per capita and the list of satisfaction. And in the national literature, we found that uh, concave relationships into these variables. And if you take variables of control that are similar, or if you have variables that in some way will give an example and character the pillars and the dimensions, you will find small relations. That is to say that at the beginning of the development phase, it seems that resolving exclusively the problem of generating income and income average, that is why big per capita might seem to be enough to alleviate the discussion of social mobility and social progress. But it would seem that as income increases, as in the case of Latin America and specifically in the case of Colombia, most effectively you begin to notice other types of things, and that is where we find the challenge. It is there where our society begins to think about a society of the future, a society where it is not enough to increase per capita income, and it is not enough to have a formal employment, because there might be other types of employment that people in my generation are interested in to discuss matters that are not fully of sustainable development, but how to communicate in an effective manner the significance of sustainable development and things of this style. This is why I'm now going to give the floor to today's experts, that effectively the National Planning Department is very happy. Uh, I am happy to participate in this event, and I believe that it is an initial step to continue and to begin to make the most of this club of good practices, of this club of proper decisions, and specifically decisions based on evidence. Thank you very much for your invitation, and I hope you enjoyed today's work day. Good day. I wanted to, under my role of director of the DANE, to participate in this welcoming message to this event that is being held within the framework of a very important initiative, which is the regional fund for the development in the transmission of the U U European Union in which we are part, specifically in the project of metrics and subjective welfare, uh, various statistics in the region, but it has been a very valuable scenario institutionally between CEPAL the European Commission and the UP, whose authorities are here with us today, and with whom, from the National Administration of Statistics, we have a commitment which is very deep, because these dialogues are the ones that generate very valuable opportunities to build new things and to ensure specifically that as statistic office, we can respond to these challenges of the transition schemes. And I would like to call your attention of this fund that associates CEPAL, the European Union, and the OPU in respect to this transition development, and to tell you about the genealogy of this event that first emerged 
due to the leadership that the OP has had in developing metrics of sustainable development, leadership particularly of Madame Fiorent, who is here with us today, and Sebastian Nieto, that also we also know that we've just been 14 months in the direction of El Dane, but initially my first visit to Santiago de Chile for the Conference of Statistics of the Americas, and in parallel, Sebastián Diano invited us to participate in a panel of development under transition. And we began to identify how this model of transition is acknowledging that our developing models, that in a certain way we share uh, these countries of the European Union, uh, Latin American countries, the m traditional metrics for development have lost their effectiveness or the capacity of providing enlightenment of what's happening in the development phenomenon. The origin of why such as, for example, the GDP or GDP per capita have lost a light to guide uh, development uh, uh, in our regions until we find the appearance of some challenges of these development models, which are the development traps that are pointed out by this very important document that I was invited, and I read it to my initiation to the DANE, and it was uh, very clear in respect to the rules of the DANE and this model of transition. These are traps that are consolidated in productivity, and traps for social vulnerability that that unfortunately and sadly we have to take this use to become more solidly involved with our friends in Chile that at this time due to this manifestation of vulnerability traps in social life have had some issues. The absence of acknowledgement of this middle class that is emerging and is characterized in our region. Also some institutional traps where we do not trust as Latin Americans and specifically as we are going to see further on as Colombians in our institutions and a very important trap which is the environmental trap. So when you see and when you collect what I just mentioned, traps for productivity, for social vulnerability, institutionality, and environmental, well, the reflection that we did with the reflective team of the DANA is what are we going to do in order to give a process on the status of these traps? And precisely on this, we feel very proud of participating in this event an event that was organized in the gardens of Sepal in Santiago in the United Nations in New York. That is to say, this is an event that has been taken about a year in its development and we're very satisfied to share with you this academic agenda with the leadership of the Universidad del Rosario and TNP. We were able to have a summons and call for papers so that some academicians or institutional leaders can present results. We also have the opportunity of establishing reflections of how these metrics can guide uh, development policies, and that is the new role that statistics offices are beginning to assume in the fora of the OP in our st European statistic offices where we no longer feel it's sufficient to provide quality information, precise information, objective and transparent information, but also information that is relevant and that will guide to policy makers to resolve these institutional traps that are so important. And within the framework of this event and taking advantage of the opportunity that I have of beginning to provide an initiation to today's agenda, the DANE is entirely committed with the development of this chapter that is so important that has given to us by Madame Guidan on the statistics of subjective welfare. 
That is why we can announce preliminarily that tomorrow at 11 a.m. we will present to the country the results of the first measurement of social capital by the DANE, where we are going to have some indicators that are very telling about institutional uh, welfare, uh, trust networks and resiliency networks and how Colombians are confronting the issues of collective action so that thanks to this collaborative work we can confront the new challenges of social economic development that are coming forth. These social economic challenges that if we retake what Carlos mentions requires going beyond measuring with precision uh, the incidence of poverty, be it in an appreciation or monetary focus or multidisciplinary uh, focus, but also to acknowledge, and I'd like to make emphasis on this figure that uh, Colombia, in what it has to do with this reduction of multidimensional poverty in the decade has reduced in 10 points the monetary poverty it has reduced 10 points of multidimensional poverty and has reduced 10 points in the subjective appreciation. For 10 years, we've been asking Colombians, specifically the heads of families, uh, in respect to the conditions of life, we asked them if subjectively they perceive themselves as poor or not. This reduction has also been of 10 percentage points. But Colombians, perceive ourselves as poor, 10 points above the objective indicators that we're proposing. When we see this, and what we observe is that approximately 46% of family heads are considered poor by themselves. To be able to place on the table a discussion on middle classes on the country is difficult. That is the signal from the perspective of perception on which we're still thinking that we only have rich and poor. We have not acknowledged yet this importance of the emergence of the middle classes that have a new demand of public services, a new perception on how to perceive life, on how you see health care, how you see work, and above all, middle class that require the resolution of its institutional traps to facilitate institutional uh, reliability, collective work where as how we are going to present, they all tell us, yes, the new model of development is produced in the territory, but only 23% of Colombians trust mayors, for example. Only 19.9% of Colombians trust on the municipal councils. So when we want to say the development model has to be centered on the territory, we have to recover this trust in institutions that we perceive in the territories. And lastly, with a lot of satisfaction and pride to be able to say that we are under the capacity of contributing as a statistics office, the DANE, the statistics department, together with BNP and working with academia, and also with the Statistics Office of Mexico, Comenji, who is the number one ally of this regional statistic, with the statistic leadership of the Conference of the CEPAL, with the leadership of the Commission of the OP, we are going to begin to work as a region, not only in Latin America, but in the European Union, to contribute to this new audiences, this new pers perspectives that most assuredly we are uh, uh, convinced will guide these development models that need to be brought forth to resolve the institutional traps that I focused on. Thank you.
That was the main message, specifically a message of a lot of excitement as the document that was prepared by Kate Stevens that has been behind the organization of this topic. Today, we're just warming our engines. That's why I see some empty chairs. And as the agenda is developed, we will have more participants. Tomorrow is our main day where we are going to have our academic guest, very important, he's going to be keynote speak, and we're going to have some proposals that most assuredly will enrich the definition of this regional agenda. And taking advantage that also, together with Lisa Alberto, I have the opportunity of being a member of this academic uh, community of this university. I'm going to change the rule, and I'm going to take the rule of uh, narrator, and I will offer a welcome to the following phase of today's agenda, where Mathilde Gioband, who is the chief of statistics of the OPTE, together with Mario Pessini, who is the director of the Center of Development of the OPE, uh, the special uh, advisor for the OPE for Development, and Rocio Sternantes, who is the director of the program of the National Director of International Development and of the European, European Union, can present this valuable project in which we want to have academic allies, non-governmental allies, and we would like to give them as a national government a message of commitment to this agenda, the project of metrics for policies of welfare and sustainable development in Latin America and the Caribbean of the OTE, the European Union, and CEPAL. First of all, we are going to have the presentation of Madame Piojal. Welcome.